Well, hello there. I hope folks are doing great today. Uh, today's topic is about dumb questions. Is it true that there are really no dumb questions? It's a good question, isn't it? Uh, you know, one of the things that's driving some research that I'm doing right now at the University of North Carolina is this idea that the right information doesn't always make it up to leadership. And I think one of the reasons that happens is that people are afraid to look dumb. There's a lot of reasons that get into why information, the good information doesn't make it to leadership, but I definitely think that this fear of looking dumb is one of them. So people don't want to ask dumb questions, right? One in four people feel like their opinions matter in the workplace. So three in four people feel like their opinions don't matter in the workplace. And this totally leads to like a sense of like, disengagement, people aren't really into things because they feel like it doesn't matter. And I think this is a problem because I think the front lines have really good ideas, but again, sometimes they're afraid to speak up because they don't want to look dumb. So have you ever asked a question and someone looks at you like you've got three heads? Or maybe you've been asked a question and you're thinking to yourself, oh my God, how come they don't know the answer to that? I remember early in my days in management consulting, uh, the word pharmaceutical was abbreviated everywhere, pharma. And I was new to like the business industry world. And I'm like, what does pharma stand for? Talk about a dumb question. Thank goodness I asked it of a safe person. And I remember someone else, a colleague of mine early, again, someone came out of like library school and into the business world and didn't know what M&A stood for, which is mergers and acquisitions, which is a pretty common thing to be talking about in a management consulting environment. Anyway, there's lots of opportunity for learning and growth, but if we can't ask these questions, what's gonna happen? You know, are there really no stupid questions? So I think that there are ways to be better at asking questions. And, you know, there needs to be a willingness to ask dumb questions because, you know, we've gotta learn. And actually this willingness to ask dumb questions, again, you could do it in a smart way, separates, research shows, separates entrepreneurs and the go-getters from people who feel stagnant and disengaged. So there is, good reason to get good at asking questions. So I would say to, to the boss, you know, sometimes you're asked the same question again and again, or you're asked things about, you know, things that are non-issues. And there are ways to help your employees empower themselves to ask better questions of themselves and free yourself of some of these interruptions. So sometimes as a boss, you might not be explaining yourself well enough. That is a possibility, but sometimes the person you're talking to might not care enough that it's not really sinking in or they're not really knowing what the first step is when they go back to do this thing again. Another thing we need to realize is just because something's easy for me doesn't mean that it's easy for everyone else. So again, we can't assume that just because you've been doing something for 10 years that everyone on the planet should know how to do it. And I know in my role, I'm constantly teaching the same thing over and over because there's such high turnover in management consulting. It just goes with the flow that I'm kind of like a high school teacher where I'm kind of getting people to a certain point and then they all turn over again and again and again. So for almost 20 years, I've been kind of saying a lot of the same things about, for example, private company information. You end up feeling like you're a robot or something. You get bored of the question, but you don't realize always oh, this is the first time this person's encountering this thing for the first time. So as bosses, we need to remember what it's like to be it's lacking information, you know, you just don't have any experience. But if someone is asking you a question, they've asked you a question three times, you know, say it to them, you know, I'm clearly not explaining myself well enough. What's going on? Just ask them what's going on. You know, I, th I think we've been over this. Is there something that I'm missing every time? And an example that I read online, this gentleman was saying, you know, the, this woman was asking where the new books are published or the new published books are stored. And the answer was the same every time it was conference room. So, you know, she's coming around and asking seemingly the same question, although maybe she was asking it a little bit differently, but the boss couldn't hear it that way. Um, he said, you know, what's going on? You've asked me this three times. And she said, she said, well, we've gotten so many, there's no more room in, in this particular room where, where we're keeping all of these new published books. So, you know, new information, new problem that needs to be solved. And, you know, keep digging as a boss, keep asking questions. Again, why, why is this question continue to come up? I thought we had cleared this up before. I think too, if you're an employee and you're in an environment where you're being, um, 
asked to do something or something is being explained to you and you like are only understanding like a third of it. And again, this happens in my environment all the time. I think that people are afraid to ask clarifying questions and we have to be willing to ask clarifying questions. So one very basic way is to just say, tell me more about that. Just, you don't have to even rephrase. You could, you could try to rephrase what you think you've heard. Those are two ideas, but one is just tell me more about that and see what else they say. You know, as meaning makers, we're trying to fill in the blanks, but if we don't have any experience with something, we can't fill in the blanks very well. So ask for more information and bosses recognize when some, something is new to someone and they need more information. Also, if you are kind of repeating back what you think you heard, like, okay, this is what I think I understood about what you'd like me to do or whatever the context is. Um, I think it's also important to acknowledge that you're doing that. Sometimes I'll have someone repeat back to me what I just said and they like, they like, <laughs> it's funny because they're not really saying that, that that's what I just said. They're just kind of repeating it in a way that it's just, it's kind of strange. Just, you know, acknowledge that you're understanding what the other person's saying, um, build rapport. I mean, all of these exchanges are opportunities to build rapport in a working relationship that is just better. Now, the third thing that I want to talk about so far, I've talked about bosses kind of being more open to asking, you know, why something isn't working and stop, you know, stop saying, um, Sorry, stop solving the non-issues for your employees. Help them to help themselves. The second thing was around, you know, employee, ask for clarification and do it in, you know, gentle ways. You could do, ask, tell me more about that. But the third thing is really changing a question completely and questions that, there are a lot of questions in the workplace that lack personal accountability. And there was one study that showed that in, in some environments, employees spend two and a half hours a day, potentially, um, and looking for answers to questions that don't matter or that that really just end up not um, that end up reinforced that someone else is responsible for something. Just questions that lack accountability, and I think this one is huge. So how can you change your question so that it becomes a smart question, that it's an energizing question that gets you towards results, so that you can have a better sense of your experience of work and your environment? And again, this is all about freedom and empowerment. So these are better questions. So. Anytime you have a question that begins with a why or a who or a when, you can change that why, who, or when to a how or a what. I'm gonna give an example in just a second. And then the next word should be I. So how can I or what can I? Um, and then you're gonna end whatever that phrase is with um, something that you can do or a way that you can help. So here's an example. Why do things keep changing? That's a very disempowered, lack of accountability type of statement. Why do things keep changing? So a way to change this could be, what can I do to get skilled up so that I'm unfazed by a change or less phased by change? I'll agree that change sometimes is not fun. And sometimes when you have no context for it, it's really frustrating as a frontline employee. Part of what I do with the nine tips in my book is to help people feel empowered so they're less phased by change and also just have some mind shifts around change and how to adapt in constantly changing, constantly interrupted environments. Um, another one, which is pretty funny, and I know this has come out of my mouth, I'm sure it's come out of every employee's mouth on the on the face of the earth, <laughs> is that who thought of this? You know, like some change is brought up, it's like who thought of this? So, and there are a number of ways that you could change this into a more empowered question. And But this one I like, how can I provide better information to decision makers? So this gets right around to my original point, that sometimes decision makers don't have the information they need to make really awesome decisions. And there's lots of reasons that they don't. And again, that's where the research that I'm conducting, where we're looking to you know, survey a lot of people to ask them, what are the reasons why your leadership can't hear you? You know, some of it could be because the kind of questions you're asking. Some of it could be because they can't hear. They're not listening. They're not making time. They're asked. Whatever the things are, we're getting to the bottom of it. But this is a great question. How can I provide better information to decision makers? Again, there's more to come on this because I really feel that environments where people are working should be collaborative. And, and if all that information is kind of being understood and felt by leadership, we're in a much better situation. One that's not fear-driven, one where people aren't afraid to ask questions, seek clarifying answers, um, and you know, 
just a, just a more collaborative, open, free environment where where business can be done, money can be made, people can have lives and, and good jobs and good salaries. It's it's all for good in the end. But let's make sure this communication is open and free, and that people are asking awesome questions. All right. I don't know if I mentioned, but if you are watching on Facebook or YouTube, I'd love it if you'd like this um, video. And of course on YouTube, if you subscribe to the channel, that would be awesome. More to come on this. I will um, provide a link to the rated nine tips um, within the description or the comments, depending on where you're watching. And I hope you're having a great week. Bye-bye.